big beard. Hey, Kayla. Hi, Ayana. <laughs> Welcome to Fill in the Blank Podcast. Welcome. Um, Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another week here at Fill in the Blank Podcast. Hi, Ayana. Hi, Kayla. How are we feeling today? <laughs> okay, let's be let's be honest. Let's be real. It's rough, y'all. It's rough out here, y'all. I'm not even playing. It's rough out here, bro. What are we gonna say? I'm downward spiraling. <laughs> I'm yes. downward spiraling. Yes, Ayana is experiencing a bit of downward spiral. Um, I I realized something about myself today that I'm not proud of, I'm not happy about, but it's just my truth. Um, is that like when I thought I was good and I was like, no, I'm healed. I'm I'm hope I'm coping well. I was just distracting myself. How are you distracting yourself? <laughs> Niggas. <laughs> Um, dating, uh, even with all the life transitions, those have been distracting, um, just from pain. And I, I genuinely, I mean, you heard me talking. I genuinely believed I was okay. Genuinely believed I was okay. I knew it was a lie. Uh, well, thank you. But. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't know if you genuinely, genuinely believed it. I know you I were did. trying to convince yourself. Was I? I thought I, I thought I was good. I was like, no, I'm doing such a good job. But I think because. I don't know. I think the reason why I think you were trying to convince yourself is it was such a like roller coaster. Yeah, it still wasn't like you you were feeling like that consistently. That's true. That's true. So, it wasn't. But I, I, I he, healing isn't linear. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, it's words. fine. It's fine. Right. Those words come back to haunt me. Like <laughs> they do. nobody's business. They do. But I was just like, oh, you know, no, it's it's a part of the process. It's fine. But now, like, I'm starting to hit rock bottom. Ayana and I today are talking about having. Identity crises. Crises. Um, crisis. 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 I'm literally crisis. telling you how to say it. Crisis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Having crises. <laughs> so Ayana feels like she's downward spiraling. I'm downward spiraling. Trauma response. What is the root? Stupid fucking. Are you ready to to the show? Okay. The divorce. The hiding mm -hmm. of what actually happened in my divorce mm -hmm. has been eating at me mm -hmm. because I can't talk about it. You can't or you won't? Okay, I won't talk about it. Why? Why are we not talking about because it? Because I'm aware. First of all, first of all, I feel, okay, there's, look, there's several reasons why I haven't felt comfortable enough to talk about it. Number one is because I know the impact it'll have on Jared. Mm-hmm. Number two is because I went so gung-ho lying mm -hmm. for this man and protecting him. And then number three, if I'm honest, because I went back for a little quick little second. Yeah. And so I feel like I have no right to speak. But no you right do. To talk. Because it's your truth. And at the end of the day, it feels like shameful because of, like those are reasons that you're you are convincing yourself that this is too shameful for me to share. But literally... Most people have been there before. I've been there before. And I think that you're going through it in way more of a public manner, which makes it feel heavier. It makes it so heavy. Yeah, it makes it super heavy. But I think that you're literally carrying it on your back by yourself right now because of the fact that you're protecting something that you are meant to speak about. We like we've talked to Ayana about this recently about just like you being a truth teller like you're meant to share you're meant to be vulnerable and speak your truth and I think that when you are keeping this thing balled up like you said it's going to eat away at you because you're unable to do that you're only able to share just a slither of truth just a slither and I don't like that the the hard part about being in this position and going through the experience with the show is that it never stops. Like, yeah, maybe next year I'll be completely healed, but when the show, an another season comes out, mm -hmm. it's like I have to relive everything all over again. I don't know if you'll 
I don't know if there's a completely healed. I don't like that, Kayla. But I mean, just being just being <laughs> well, honest. I don't like that. I'm just being honest. I think that we learn how to cope and we learn how to deal with stuff, but stuff that has hurt us, stuff that has like cut us that deep, you don't necessarily get over it. In my in my perception i think that we learn how to deal with those things you know yeah you get what i'm saying so like i mean I guess you can get true. to a point of healing where you are able to process and deal with but there are some things that happen to us that just cut so deeply that it it really does alter and shift us it becomes a part of who we are That's and if you can choose if it's going to be a part of who you are for the negative or for the positive are you going to let that thing run you or are you going to learn how to how to like get a handle on it and be like, this thing happened to me, but it is not me. I am beyond, I am bigger than this situation that has impacted me. Yeah. And I think that by you, when you get to the point where you feel ready to share, I think that that's, that is one of the steps in you deciding that you're going to take hold of this thing and stop letting it control you. It, I will say I think it has stunted my healing in a way because I can't I can't talk about it in a way of because pro- how I process things is by talking that about is. it is by talking about it yep um and sharing with my community like and and helping like people and like it's healing for me to do that yeah. and the fact that I can only talk about an aspect of my marriage but not all of it mm-hmm. is it, it it really is having an effect on me like it really is having an effect what do you feel? If anything, like no pressure, is there anything that you feel comfortable to like release now? right now? Mm-hmm. Jared cheated. How did you find out? I found out three days before after the altar. Mm-hmm. I received an email mm-hmm. with very details, with details, <laughs> very specific details. I remember when this happened because mm-hmm. we went out to eat. Remember? Oh. We went to Chicago Oyster House. Oh, yeah. And you dropped that bomb on me when we were literally at dinner. And I was like, yeah, fuck. I let you read the email too, didn't I? Oh, I read the whole thing. I saw it all. The picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a lot for me to have to, because immediately I was like, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. And then my mom was like, Ayana, you're making a decision out of anger. And I realized she was right. Yeah. And I can't, I couldn't do that. It's a marriage. It's a whole marriage. It's a whole It's not marriage. like a relationship where you kind of like, you make you make decisions like, okay, this is a red flag. I need to get up and go. Like, yes, it's a red flag. But then you also battle with the fact that you made commitment yeah. to stay. And I knew what and my gut was telling me not to. And even still, I did it. And mm-hmm. so I felt like even still, I needed to like, I just had to see it through. Yeah. But it was a lot. It was so much for me to have to still film after that and pretend as if like, not pretend as if everything was okay, but like, I just, I couldn't talk about it. Yeah. Um, And to still continue to protect and people are like, oh, why is she so disgusted with him? She don't even like being, because I was. I was going to say that kind of brings you to the point and where you I could address backlash. after the altar. That's what I'm saying. Like I was getting backlash for things that were happening in our marriage. And it's just like, I don't know, whatever. And people, and people make the assumption then that you are this unhealed person. You are this person that is projecting. And it's not necessarily that, but you were actually going through real things. Yeah. That were impacting you and your marriage from decisions that you didn't make. But he made. Yeah. And I think that anybody in that situation would be triggered. Anybody would be having a hard time to to know how to pretend. Because that's basically what you were doing. That's what it felt like. You were trying to pretend until it hopefully got better. That's that's what it felt like. I think we both were, quite honestly. Jared yeah. was unhappy, too. I mean, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> but clearly. <laughs> I was unhappy. He was unhappy. It was just a terrible fit. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't ready. And I, I guess to an extent, I wasn't either. Yeah. However, I would have been, I would have been a good wife to someone who was a good partner to me. Yeah. And I think it made you, from the outside looking in, and the part that scared me for you was seeing the literal life getting sucked out of you. Because of the fact that the person that I met when I very first met you, like was almost like a shell of who you had become in that, in that relationship. 
And that's hard. I was so drained. You were. And that's the reason why I really want you to give yourself grace. And I feel like you've been beating up on my friend. I don't like that. You've been being mean to yourself because you've been going through a lot. A lot. It is not like this was just an ordinary relationship. Number one, you were married. Number two, you did it in front of millions of people on television for people to rewatch and people to recount and people to pick at. And none of those things are natural for a human. Normal. They're not normal. Mm-mm. No one is supposed to go through this. No. This is not normal to endure. No. It's really not. Mm-mm. It's not. So what do you want to do at this point in order to heal? Because you've been saying that you feel like you haven't been coping in a positive way. But like, what do you desire for your healing journey that you haven't done? I just got to, I really do need to start pouring into myself in healthy ways. And I have not been doing that. And I've been distracting myself with just like different things, thinking like, oh no, this feels healthy. Yeah. Healthy enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I have to start taking care of myself. Yeah. I really, really do. And just living my life authentically the way that I actually want to without any, any, anything else like hindering that. Yeah. So then you can walk into the actual identity of who you're called to be instead of the portrayal that you have been keeping up in order to protect people. Number one, I will say like to, to try to shift it to the positive version of yourself that you might not be able to see is the fact that this shows like how truly big your heart is that you chose to compromise your own well-being your own self in order to protect somebody else that didn't do the same for you so even though like it was too far and I think that it's about you creating boundaries around that and what that looks like you know Mm -hmm. but I think that that is something for you to recognize about yourself that like you are lovable, like beyond lovable, you know, and you're worthy Yeah. because of the fact that you opened up your heart so big for literally people to the whole world to see. Yeah. And even though it didn't turn out the way that you expected for it to like, I think that from what I see, even though you're going through it right now, you haven't allowed it to break you because you are still going and you're still saying, I need to find ways to do this better. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think you're getting there. I think I am too. I'm just tired. What's the action? Like I, I wish I had like the, my, I mean, easy clearly fix. That's, it, look, that's what I kept searching for. Where's the easy fix? Man? It's not one. It's not one. You got to go through it. You can't go around it. Can't go over it or under it. You have to go through it. Otherwise you're just prolonging the, the journey. Damn, I got to get, I, I have to. Uh, what do you have to do? That's why I was going to ask you if you I could give me to, some actionable things that you could do to replace the negative ones that you've. First of all, I need to just like be honest with myself about where I am Mm -hmm. and about um, how much I've been coping with. Um, And I have to just get used to the idea of just being uncomfortable again. Mm -hmm. I think it was a lot for me. Talk about identity crisis. It was a lot for me to go to be so gung ho about being a married woman and being the best wife that I can be. And I was like, I just want to be a good wife. Like that's all I've (laughs) ever I just want to be a good you wife. Want. And then to all of a sudden be divorced. Oh, all of a sudden. But to be divorced. But kind of all of a sudden. And have to adjust to the fact that, oh my God, like I have to be single again. I have to start over all over again. Mm-hmm. I have to readjust my life and my thought process because you, I didn't realize just in the in like tiny, small ways, like how used to being married I got. Yeah. Even even the the secret layer of protection that I, I knew that I had, knowing that I had a husband. Mm-hmm. Granted, Jared was very neglectful in a lot of emotional and mental ways. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, I knew if I, if I needed something like physically for him to do, I could call him him and he just be right there yeah and so now i have to adjust to the fact that like i'm alone and Mm -hmm. in it to an extent i'm alone again yeah 
And that, and do you think that that's where you're at now that makes you feel like you're having an identity crisis of like, who am I because yeah. of this shift from married woman, I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to support you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to love you to now you having to give that to yourself. Yeah. And the expectation was that he was going to give that to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what else are you going to do? Bro, I need a reset. You do. I, I legit need a reset outside of just like um, just being in my apartment doing nothing. Mm-hmm. I need like a legit reset and I need to make a plan for myself as far as like what I want to start adding into my daily routine to to nourish myself and to pour back into myself. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that I think that you giving yourself the opportunity to just kind of like block out the noise Mm. and then also to be mindful of the surroundings that you're putting yourself in when you are so vulnerable and you're trying to heal. Like you have to be even, it's literally like what they talk about with relationships, right? Like, like when you're in a vulnerable state, like you're susceptible to like entering unhealthy, but it's like almost the same thing with like, with, not just romantic relationships, but just like friendships and people that surround Mm -hmm. you. Like you have to be so careful because so many people don't mean you well. And it's easy to fall into that because that's easier than falling into when people are like wanting to pour into you and they want to address with you what's going on. You like, I don't want to talk about this shit. Yeah. Leave me alone. Right. I feel like that's where you've been at. Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> maybe just a bit you know just a little bit yeah i think you bounce in and out i do bounce in and out which is exhausting for me it has to be because there'll, there'll be times where i like i'm ready to heal i'm ready to heal and then there'll be other times where I'm like i'm tired bruh can i just be toxic for a quick little second and you just retreat and then i retreat you literally isolate yourself and you, you like Put yourself in this position where you're like, well, I'm going to uh, go spiral and I'm not going <laughs> and then to I'll tell, tell you anybody after the fact. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, can't help you now. Like, <laughs> what's done is done. <laughs> yeah. It's but okay. you're growing. I am growing. Look, I don't want y'all to think I'm out here really just like wild and I'm not that bad. No, it's not. It's not that bad, but it's just that. It's not that bad, but it's also not that healthy either. It's not. And it's it's just that bad because of the space that it's putting you in emotionally. Yeah. Like, it's not necessarily the actions, but it's more so, like, what it's doing, how it's impacting you. Yeah. That's the part that's that's negative. That's all that I really care about. Yeah. It's just, like, your emotional well-being and where you are and what you feel like you need to do to get back on track, like what is good for you to get back on track, how like as a friend group, we can be supportive of you getting back to yourself. Yeah, And I think though, (laughs) it's crazy because you're not going to, we were just saying this, but like you're not going to be just the person that I met when I first met you. Mm. Because now something has happened that has now altered yeah, I could never go back. Well, cause that 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 me was like ridiculously naive too. Mm-hmm. So I I could never go back to that sunshine, rainbows, and unicorns me. No, this one's been slightly. There's some shade around. Like. But the thing about <laughs> this one that's even better is you will now be equipped with the boundaries mm. and the that knowledge. That is one thing. That is one thing that I learned is 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 actually brown. What my boundaries actually are and yeah. how to uphold those. The issue where I start to struggle is when I'm by myself and I have to set boundaries for myself. Yeah. Get yelling at somebody else <laughs> to respect my boundaries is different. Yeah. But when I have to like yell at myself. But that's when you have to lean on the people around you to let me, let us mm, hold you hold accountable, accountable because it's hard. Yeah. It's not easy to do, but that's the whole point of having community of having a village it's like i don't have to do this by myself yeah it would be different if you were alone but you're not and i think that a lot of times when we're going through things like this it feels like we're very isolated you feel like you're on this island by yourself but 
like it's necessary for you to get the reminders, which is why, even though I know, you know, I always tell you like, I'm here for you. How do you want me to show up for you? Like, is there something that I could do? And then also me recognizing that as a friend that I have to show up for you just and just show up Mm -hmm. because most of the time when people are in positions like what you're in, you don't know what you need or what you want from people. Yeah. Especially because I'm not used to leaning on other people because in my mind, it's always like, well, what can you do for me? Like, this is just something I have to experience on my own. Mm-hmm. But I will say, I mean, you guys are are you guys do support me by allowing me to talk to you about all this stuff mm-hmm. um, and helping me process and helping me cope. And when I do have those moments of enlightenment, when I need advice, you guys give it. Yeah. And it's those moments that will help you push through to the other side, because yeah. when you forget to see yourself as who you are, as the person that we see you as it's the reminder like oh my gosh like when like when you're in that dark space you can't see anything I can't <laughs> look I can't see nothing I've always um I've always been someone who struggled with depression since high school um and I I have experienced quite a few lows in my life and most of the time I have brought myself out of them but it takes me like a, a quite a while like it takes me quite a while the difference is is like me now um I've built my life in a way where I do have all these healthier things happening, uh, but I keep holding myself to where I used to be, Mm -hmm. forgetting that like I have the skills, I have the tools now, Mm -hmm. um, and I can't revert back to what my reflexes used to be, and Mm -hmm. I'm completely capable of like creating a new path for myself. Yeah. Um, And so that's what I I finally realized. (laughs) I finally realized, uh, even just today, in the last two days that I've been wallowing in my apartment, Mm -hmm. is that like... It's it's time for a shift. It's time for a change. All this transition is going on anyways, and I just might as well embrace it. It's just so uncomfortable to do yeah. that. Um, but I mean, like, what else? What what other choice do I have? Hmm. It's like sink or swim, huh? Yeah, it literally is. And I and I think that's the reason why it's it's probably pushing at you even more right now because you made the decision I, to choose yourself. Yeah, and I I will say I think it's escalated. It's mm-hmm. escalated this. I feel like if I still had my job even, I probably wouldn't have experienced this low until like during the summer. Yep. Or like at the end of the summer. It was like a band-aid. It was It was almost like band-aid. something to like keep all the like- A distraction. The, yeah. Keep all the water in. And then like as soon as you decided that you were going to choose yourself, you ripped it off and it was like- <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. And now I can't close the hole back up. No. Nope. <laughs> and now- it, You I let think, it out. <laughs> I really do think that God is forcing me into this. Yep. And granted, I, I've allowed, I've gone according to the plan, but now I'm like, wait, 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 no, no, no. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Yep. I'm not ready. Purpose is never going to feel comfortable, especially because we get tested the most when we follow our purpose. See, and I, that's, why I, that's why I'm like, all of a sudden I feel like I'm being attacked. My you health. Are. You're my under health, attack. Bro, I feel like I've been some, sick with something for the last two, three months. And I think sometimes, like, what happens is people a lot of time like to call that the enemy. And sometimes it's not the it's enemy, not. it's God. It- and it's God like, okay, I tried to get your attention like this and like this and like this. You didn't listen. So now I'm going to attack your health. <laughs> that what's what's going What's going to make you get it? I don't like this. Yeah. God don't like it either. <laughs> right. He said, how long? Your hard-headed ass. I know he up there cussing my... I mean, he don't cuss. But, <laughs> but even still, just like, your hard-headed ass. Yeah. Because I am hard-headed. Mm-hmm. Why I got to be like this? Because you a Taurus. Oh. With a Leo moon. The most stubborn. And a Sagittarius My rising. God. Today. Triple whammy. <laughs> Literally, that is like the recipe for rage. Literally, I'm a rager, man. Yes. But a secret rage. You are. You are, because I would have never thunk it. It's like, oh, Ayana, what? <laughs> I would have never thunk it. And I then know. as we started getting closer, I said, yep, there it is. I see it. There it is. Because I'm telling you, that Taurus will keep me grounded for a nice little bit. Mm -hmm. Nice and grounded. But then when the stubbornness starts kicking in with the other two fire signs, boy, Mm -hmm. it's hard. It's it's hard for me to keep myself in check. Yeah. What a life. What a life. But you got this. You know, it's okay. I do got this. And I'm so super proud of you. Why? Because you literally just had the courage to speak about something that you just said 
on this podcast that you can't talk about it. And you talked about it. I did. And I was just like, well, it happened. Yeah. Because I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> look, I'm tired. You got to look. We walking into this full force. This I'm season so is full tired. force. I had to give you a gentle nudge. I'm like, now's the time. Let's talk about it. I like it. how she's, so is there anything that you- Feel oh. comfortable talking about right now? I'm like, okay. Uh, yeah. Like the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, cat's out of the bag. That, that wasn't even that big, though. It feels... I feel like it felt big to me. Yeah. Because I've been holding it and holding it. Yeah. But all you had to do is like... It's like that um, that um like that image uh, that circulates the internet with God holding this huge teddy bear and you have, and he has it behind his oh. back, and you have the tiny one. And you're like, God, but I don't want to. And he's like, just give it up. Yeah. I have something for you. And you're like, no, my little teddy bear, I love it. <laughs> Girl, if you don't get that thing up. Okay, look. <laughs> I'm just saying. Sometimes we don't get our, well, I feel like most of the time we don't get our blessing until, until we, we release. release. Yeah. Yeah. It's time to release. All control. All love it. I'm like proud that, of you. But whatever. <laughs> face ass <laughs> no it's a face ass moment well enough about me talking about my trauma talk about your identity my, my turn yeah your turn oh wow okay <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that I am having an identity crisis because I am about to get married Ooh. And not in a negative way, not like cold feet, like I don't want to get married, but it just really makes me... It's a shift. It's a huge shift and it's like a responsibility. Yeah. And I think that people, um, of course, you get the romanticized version all the time of like, oh, you're about to get married. But there's so much that comes with that. Like there's the... The name change. That part, that is what triggered it for me. The yeah. name change triggered it for me. And I never thought, but that was because I didn't get along with my dad oh. for such a long time. So you didn't really care. So when me and my dad were not seeing eye to eye for a lot of the time I was just like oh yeah like without a doubt when I get married drop the last name blah 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 but as of recent I've been closer with my dad and I also just think about um like my mom yeah. and when I was younger that when her last name was just Scott and she didn't have her other last name. She ended up hyphenating it once they got a divorce. Mm -hmm. But I remember when she did hyphenate it, I was like, that sounds so weird. Mm -hmm. Like her real, her born last name, mm -hmm. I thought it was weird. And she was just like, well, Kayla, this is who I always have been. Yeah. You know, like for more years than not, people have known me as this last name. You just have known me. And I, and I think about like when I have kids, like, oh my gosh, like they won't know a part of me yeah like and that is such a big part of me it's the it's part of what has led me to Marcus it's part of what has connected us is who I was prior to us getting married mm. so it's just been hard mm. to think about that think about giving up a piece of myself and so that's been like a big conversation that Marcus and I have been talking about is mm. like hyphenating my last name like keeping that piece of me because it just feels so like personal yeah, it is personal because it is personal yeah it's a, it's a literal physical representation of you shedding who you were yeah and I think it's an only child thing too like I'm an only child and it it it, it took a lot for me to take on the last name Jones because I'm my dad my dad is adopted. Mm -hmm. He's the only child. Yeah. And he has the last name McNeely. Mm -hmm. I'm the only child yeah. who's also adopted with the last name McNeely. Yeah. After me, like, that's it. Yep. That's literally it. And that's how I view it now. And I didn't view it like that before. I think some things you don't get the full perspective of until, until you experience it. it. Yeah. And I never thought that it was going to hit me like this, but it's like hitting me hard. And I really be thinking about it. I'm just like, dang, like, am I going to... Like, I'm going to have to give up pieces of myself. And that's mm -hmm. kind of like what marriage is. Like, you give up pieces of yourself in order to um, be with this person mm -hmm. and for you all to, like, become one. Mm -hmm. And I think that people like to, you know, 
fantasize about this idea of no, like you're your yourself and they're themselves, and it's it's just not reality that's of not what marriage works. is. Yeah, like, like and because works. and if you do that, it's not gonna work. That's not <laughs> look. <laughs> Because you have to compromise you and have you to. have to give up pieces of yourself that you might have had previous to that relationship in order to decide that you are going to become one with this other it's person. It's a union. It's literally a union. Yeah. It should be. Yep. So it's been hard. That and then wedding planning is like, damn, like I'm thinking about people that I thought would be here for my day that are not here mm -hmm. like that makes me have an identity crisis because I'm like oh my gosh like all the people like I have some people that um like Ariel and like Miranda like those are people that have been in my life for a very long time that I always envision being there on my special day yeah but then there are other people who I thought that would be there that my relationships with them have like dwindled over the years. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's, it's weird because it's like, it's sad about them, but then I'm also so appreciative of the community I've built. Yeah. And I feel very connected to the people that, that have been sent to me. Yeah. Um, in this time, but it's just, it's weird to, to just like forget about. you always about. envision them there. So it's yeah. having to like reimagine things. Yes. It's reimagining yeah. everything. Everything, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Your whole life is reimagined. So I think it's really easy, especially with me. Like, you know that I'm such a like hopeless romantic. Grow like grew up watching like all these fairy tales. So I just have always romanticized like getting married. Yeah. And not thinking about the technical pieces mm. of like dying off parts of yourself in yeah. order to to be with a person. It's wild. Isn't it uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. It really is. And it's crazy because I think I don't really have time to to feel it fully right now. Because you're still in planning mode. Yeah. Again, there's all these distractions. You mm -hmm. don't have time to really process everything. You just have to like have the conversations, make a decision, then keep it trucking. Yeah. I'm really craving like stillness at this point in my girl, life. Girl, <laughs> girl. You said, let's talk about it. I told it. you, I am about to go on a mini retreat to, for myself. And I love that for you. I wish you were on spring break. I'd make you come with me. I know. Because I'm on spring break this week. So See, if you was on I a retreat right now, I would have come because I need that like, that reset. And I've been really feeling like what you said, like I need to be out in nature. I forget about that when the winter time comes because yeah. it's cold outside and I don't want to be outside. Yeah. But as soon as the summer comes, I start to, when the weather gets nicer, I remember because like when I was living with my Nana, I used mm. to get up and go outside every morning, drink a cup of coffee. And I would just sit out there with my journal and I would listen to the birds chirp. And yes. I was just like, look out. That's peace. Mm -hmm. That is peace. Yeah. I need that. Yep. It's so super important to me and my like my well being because those days like that's why quarantine was so like restorative because mm -hmm. that's how I I started my day every single day mm -hmm. and so it's just like not having those experiences and not having that stillness like it's not enough to just be still in here like I told it's you, not enough I've been cramped up in my apartment and I thought it was enough for me to just have the free time I'm like oh I don't have a job now like it's free time but it, it feels stifling in there yeah and with me being a homebody it's hard because I don't really seek uh to retreat or recharge other places yeah. like I'm just like, well, where else I, do I go? I just caught on way too late. I was like, wait a second. I need to get I need, Look. To, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of here. That's how I be feeling. I just be sitting here. I'm like, dang, like this ain't really doing it. Yeah. Full out. Like I need to go someplace else. Yeah. But I don't be knowing where to go. It's so hard. Chicago's a rough place to like get that oh, Chicago in. Chicago is the worst place to do this. Chicago it really is. is the worst. It really is. And that's why people... People don't understand, like, with me, I'm originally a city girl, mm. but, like... <laughs> city girl. City Sorry. girl. <laughs> um, like, from the city, but I have always connected more with the suburbs because I crave that quietness. Mm -hmm. Like, to be able to live next to a city where I can access it Same. when I want to do stuff. But, like, I really enjoy being in the suburbs because that is where you get the most stillness, like, yeah. being in this 
chaotic city. Yeah. So I have always enjoyed it better because I'm like, it's quiet. Like, there's not as much going on. Like, it just feels safer. It doesn't feel as chaotic. There's mm-hmm. not so much energy just like being thrown at you, being kicked up. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what it looks like for me right now. Like, to be able to cope with everything. Like, I'm I'm truly having an identity crisis about, like, me being about to be a married woman, mm-hmm. um, what I need to recharge myself, and then also with me, like, about to finish with grad school. Like, yeah. this kind of goes with what we were talking about with the imposter syndrome episode, but just, like, damn, like... I'm about to really be the master of something. And that feels very heavy for me. Yeah. Like to have that amount of like responsibility and going into a job where like I'll be the go-to in that way. Yeah. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how to balance it all. It's it's rough. I really want to just run into a hole right now and is this hide. what being in your 20s is? Yes. Is it because we're in our 20s? Yes. Or is every wait for y'all who are like in your 30s? Like, are y'all experiencing some of this too? Or is it just us? I feel like I hear people when they when they get to their 30s, they say it's kind of like more of the golden years. Like, okay. remember when we had our episode with Vicky? She said that when yeah. she turned 30, everything just like made sense. Like, she was just sure of who she was, yeah. and like you start to be able to implement these boundaries better and all of that. And I think that we are just figuring out how to be adults right now. Bro, I feel like, <laughs> no, that ass. <laughs> I really feel like I'm in a swimming pool, like <laughs> <laughs> trying to tread water. Yes, like. trying to breathe. I'm like, dang, like, <laughs> can we get the shallow in? Please. It, it's all the adapting. It's all the change. Yes. Like, I just want something to be settled. And that's what I thought that marriage was. I was like, oh, finally, something settled. settled. Nope. Got the rug ripped out from That was like me. quite the opposite of settled. Oh, that was a complete opposite. Of <laughs> you were settled. way more settled prior Before, to it. Yes. Oh my God. I was I was at peace. I yes. was healed. Yes. I was, I mean, I was naive, yes, but nonetheless, <laughs> I was happy. You were optimistic. Look, and look at me now, a cynic. <sighs> Girl. <laughs> downward spiral. Girl, downward spiral. But I, I always say that like, even though it feels crazy, rock bottom is kind of like a good place to be. <laughs> I don't know why I thought about Spongebob, but... <laughs> because it was called... I think it was called Rock Bottom. I think so, too. Yeah, it's it's a good place to be just because you really get to assess your... Yourself. You're forced to. You're forced to. I think it's a good place to be if you have the skill set to get... It is. I was about to say, I think it's a... get stuck in Rock Bottom. Yeah. And, and they stay, stay there. there. Yeah, but I'm thinking about us because oh, because we're different. We're yeah. we're growers. We're we're different. We're growers, and yeah. <laughs> we're different. <laughs> if you want to be different, you can be different too. <laughs> but yeah, like we are in the mindset, and and that's what's so powerful about having people around you of growth mindset. Yeah, because of the fact that when you are in that dark place, you, you have the there. people to to pour into you to and remind you, know you. You won't stay there. You won't stay there. I know I won't stay here. No, I'm sure in like two three months I'm like, oh wow, it's real sh- sunshine out here. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially when you know that you're ready for a shift. I'm ready for a shift, bro. Because once you're ready, stuff just takes off. I'm tired. It- <laughs> Look, I'm tired. Was this this conversation? Was this what did it for Maybe. you? Maybe I asked Diana. Get my ass whooped out here, man. <laughs> I asked Diana before we started recording. <laughs> I was like, "Are you numb or are you tired?" And she was like, "I'm tired." And I was like, "Nah, you ain't tired. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you ain't, you ain't here tired. Yet. <laughs> you ain't tired." Because I asked her, "So what are you gonna do?" And she's like, "But I, I had plans." But you didn't when we was out there. You said I, I had don't know. plans out there. I just didn't want to say. Well, yeah. it's not that I didn't want to say it. It's just my go-to is always like no. Yeah, she was like I don't know. I don't know. I was like you gonna do something about it. You was like no. no. I said then you know you ain't tired. No, I'm tired. When you when you tired, I'm you tired, gonna know bro. it's gonna be it's gonna be a feeling. A bitch is tired. I hope you tired. I am tired. <laughs> Kayla, Kayla, like, nah. I need to see it. <laughs> I've heard her say she tired before, y'all. So I need to see the action. Look, I was like, nah, I got a little raging in me. A little bit more. Just a little she bit. She told me that she was tired about <laughs> two, three weeks ago. And then called me after she raged. And I was like, but I thought I thought, I thought we, we were was done. tired. Was like, she was like, yeah, no, I'm not done. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so much hope. See, I just can't with myself. But you get me. I exhaust myself. You know? 
But you, when I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, that's all of us. When Look, I, I am the type of person that it it does not waver me because I feel like when I was going through my spiral, mm-hmm. I think the only person that put up with me for real. <laughs> put up with me for real <laughs> was Ariel because when my when I was in my so unlike unlike some other situation I don't think that I was spiraling when I was like living like I kind of spiraled a little bit but then like I really actually like got closer to God and that's kind of like how I got out of it but I was spiraling when I was in my last relationship mm-hmm. and Ariel was just sitting there looking at me like <laughs> girl and I was like yeah it's bad out here she had a whole conversation with Nana about it because they were like what are oh, we gonna dang. do Nana you was out here <laughs> you had to bring in the big gun. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it was, it was bad. bad. It was bad. So my spiral was in a relationship and I really wanted people to like save me. Yeah. And and everybody was just I, like, I think that when I go through, I, all of my spirals have been in relationships. In them. In them. Mine is always When I'm after. in them. And most of the time. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah, yeah, mine is always in, but I think it's because I was so self um compromising mm. that I would literally give anything to make the relationship work. Mm. I would give anything to make the relationship work. And most of the time I had to pray myself out of those relationships. Jesus. Because I was so stuck. Jesus. And I knew, I knew it wasn't right. I knew it wasn't the but I could not move. I was unwavering. Bruh. Unwavering. I Much feel, like, you know, feel it. where you're at. Where but just right, but outside of it. See, mm-hmm. that's what I'm saying. I'm fine. Because I think I think the reason why I don't downward spiral in the relationship is because I know in a relationship I have a sense of responsibility and there's a role that I need to play as a girlfriend or mm-hmm. as a wife. Like I have a duty. Mm-hmm. I look at legit. I have this a is duty. A role. This is a role. This is wow. a responsibility. That's so interesting. But that's how I've been raised to look at marriage and stuff as a wife, like it's a role. I have a role to play. And has I, that shifted? I hope not, because in a way, like that that form of dedication is what honestly what kept me in my marriage as long as it did. And I'm in a way I'm proud of that. Mm-hmm. Because even still, I tried my best to still, even still maintain being a good wife mm-hmm. and and a, a, as best of a supporter as I could be, despite me like trying to heal and trying to forgive at the same time, which was so hard. Yeah. I'm still working on forgiving. Yeah. I'm still mad. Yeah. Sleek. Mm-hmm. Sleek. <laughs> Sleek is okay though. You know, it's I love okay. him. I love him. He's stupid, but I love him. Loved. Okay, loved. I love it. I love him as a person. Yes. Yeah, I don't love him like that. But I think this so, <laughs> so here's the thing though. The <laughs> reason why I the reason I tried to correct her because when when you still carry those emotions you have a hard time disconnecting you saw how hard it was because i still felt this strong sense of responsibility to be a support for him even after look i was like that is not your man (laughs) but what i realized is like the 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 what it did to my mind for me to train my because i didn't like him Mm -hmm. i did not like him i didn't like his character but even still i was like he is my husband yep i have to love and you didn't switch out of that mindset it took a while for me to detach from that yeah i felt even still that sense of commitment and dedication Mm -hmm. i'm like but 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 look at him i see him for the person that he is because i do yeah that doesn't mean it's, I have to tolerate it. That's the dangerous though. part. The that doesn't mean I have to support it. <laughs> the potential it it could get you in some in some messed up places. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Okay, let's offer any advice that we might have for identity crisis people out there. Me offer advice. We both look. Me offer advice into the thick of it. A part two. I think you should do the part one was identify. Identifying uh, it where we're at. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So we'll return we with should. part That'll two. Good because you're going to go on this retreat. You're going to journal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm on spring break, so I'm going to really try to like, like yeah, okay. my my goal is to really like try to pour into myself this week, even though it's hard because it feels like this week is everything going on. Like mm-hmm. I don't really have many chances to sit still yeah, ever yeah. ever that's the problem i never have opportunity for stillness yeah so it's just like 
I can't choose to not show up places, yeah. not in this season of my life. I, I just can't. I don't have that option because I'm planning a wedding. I have to finish grad school. Don't get burnt out now. I'm burnt out already. I'm literally on autopilot right now. Like I just do what I have to do. I show up where I'm supposed to be and I'm there and I try to be my full yeah. self. But that's the reason why when I have moments to like lay down and be still, I am just like a ball of nothing. Yeah. A ball of nothing. And Marcus sees it and I feel bad because sometimes I think he gets the the short end of the stick with me because he's so up close to it and I still have to be present in my mm. romantic relationship. And if I like- That's if, going through a transition. That's going through a transition. Yeah. And if I don't have the energy to pour, mm. like if my cup is empty and it's not his job for, cause I feel like somebody will comment and be like, well, that's what a relationship for you pour into each other's cups. But some things are not his responsibility. Yeah. The, the type of emptiness that I am at is not his responsibility. It's not lack of him pouring into me. It's lack of me pouring into myself. Mm. And I think that, um, that's where people come to relationships and you meet the person where they're at and that he needs to do things that make him his full self. And mm -hmm. I have to do things that make me my full self. And then you guys support each other through that. Yes. So it's just that I have not been doing the work on my end yeah. to be my full self. Yeah. Cause I just quite literally, I be feeling like I don't have a time. Yeah. I just, it's only so many hours in a day. <laughs> it's only so many. So yeah. the time management thing has been like the, just the vein of my existence right now. I'm just like, I don't understand it. I don't understand. But I think that I really am being optimistic and I'm trying to change the way that I speak about this phase mm. because I know that like this phase is setting the groundwork for the both of us, both of us where we're at right now in this feeling of going through crisis of knowing who we are it is literally laying the framework for us to be the versions of ourselves that we desire this is laying the framework for those 30s yep because if we don't do it now we'd have to do it later and i sure as hell i'm not doing it later yeah, <laughs> i need to no. do it now while i'm still young mm -hmm. and and uh adaptable yeah it's just grounding ourselves as the type of adults we want to be and transition will be like it's going to constantly happen. We'll yeah. constantly go through things, but we'll now know how to deal better with transition and to kind of grow an adaptability to such like big shifts that go on in life. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I want to get to a point, hopefully by the end of this year, when there is like a transition that I, my go-to, my reflex is the healthy coping mm. skills that I've laid out for myself. That's good. I think that my goal is that I really want to um, create consistency mm. with myself. Mm. I think that I've been, and it's because I think previously I wasn't consistent in showing up places. And so that has been something I've strived to do. And now I've done that, but I've like, it's always balls to wall with me, like mm. extreme, like, okay, this is the thing I need to be better at. And then I go like full force at that thing. And then mm -hmm. I forget about the other side of it. So I have to create this middle ground of how to show up for myself mm -hmm. and what that looks like, you know? I do. I feel like a lot of people learn that way because I, I definitely learn. I, I live my life and I learn my life in extremes <laughs> where I'll do too, like not enough of something or I'll do too much of something. And it's experiencing both where I'm finally like, oh, okay, so here's the balance. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's a pretty natural way to learn. Yeah. Um, it's just uncomfortable and it feels stupid sometimes. Man. But even still. Yeah. <laughs> He's sitting there. Sorry, that vibrate <laughs> scared, scared me. <laughs> Um, but anything else you want to share about identity crisis? <sighs> they're not fun. Yeah, they suck. Um, <laughs> they're we're not fun. literally they in the thick of it right now, guys. So you guys like, are watching us. We're trying to we're Look, trying this thing about being vulnerable. And this authentic. is a, this is true vulnerability for us to share in the moment because we of typically what's don't do this. Yeah, usually <laughs> it's like oh, in retrospect, like this is what happened and this mm -hmm. is how I learned. Nope, we're in it. Yeah. And we want to be real about that stuff because, I mean, like, we are not experts of life. <laughs> no, for real. We are still trying to figure it out. And I think that we that's what the 20s are about yeah. is literally trying to figure it out. And if we want 
this platform to be us taking you all along on the journey, that means that we have to share our journey. I mean, that was the purpose of us doing this. We didn't do this to try to be experts. We didn't try to, you know, share it. <laughs> what? Every time I want to say dropping gems, we're not out here just trying to drop gems. <laughs> um, we we legit want you guys to, I mean, learn through us. Yeah. And feel a sense of community because I, I understand and I think Ayana does too, that like we are privileged in that we are surrounded by people who know how to pour into each other and we like are supportive of each other and everybody doesn't have that everybody doesn't have people to make them feel seen and make them feel heard when they're going through something so like if us sharing that we in some shit right now helps you feel like dang like somebody recognizes me somebody gets it like that's that's all that we literally ever pray for before we do our episodes is like that it can resonate with at least one person. At least one person. Yeah. I can't be the only one down or spiraling right now. Hell. Is that one? <laughs> <laughs> that might be the name of the episode. Is there one? <laughs> oh, God. Life is exhausting. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay. Any feel of the weeks? Mm, feel of the week. Oh, I'm well... I'm watching Shadow and Bone. What's that? It's a Netflix series. Is it scary? No. It sounds scary. It's not. It's not <laughs> That's always my first question. <laughs> it's not scary. It's a, it's a fantasy show. You know, oh. You know, I like fantasy I like stuff. fantasy stuff. It's like uh, they got the Grisha. They basically have like powers and shit. Oh, I like that type of stuff. Yeah. I couldn't watch. What's, it's this show on Netflix called Lock and Key. And I could not watch. You couldn't watch, watch Lock and Key, scary. Kayla. Lock and Key, Kayla. It was scary. It's a kid's show. No. <laughs> Wasn't it some scary stuff happening on there? Kayla. Maybe I'm thinking about the wrong one. But it was one of them shows and I turned it on and it was some possession type stuff going on. I said, oh, <laughs> hell maybe no. It was, look, maybe it was like it. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first episode. It was something with like, I don't do supernatural possession type stuff. I'm not letting them evil spirits into my home. <laughs> they cannot enter into my psyche. I have to protect myself. Kayla said they gonna come through the screen. Look, that's why I had a hard time with... Uh, <laughs> With Stranger Things. Oh, I stopped watching Stranger Things. Season four? Because of that. I'm not even going to lie. I got a little overwhelmed at some point. I said, no, it's too much. I wasn't right for a good week or so after watching like the first batch of episodes of Stranger (laughs) Things. Once I understood what was going on, it wasn't as scary. Yeah. But to see Vecna for the first time, I said, what is this? (laughs) This is not the show that I've been watching. (laughs) I, I don't like this. When did it get so dark? When did it get so dark? I don't like it. <laughs> That's why I be trying to watch comedies and Disney Channel. Oh, there's a comedy that, that I want to watch so bad. It's I, I don't know. What, I think it's called like Jury Duty or something. They Have, have you seen it? I've seen like TikTok. Oh my God. I want to watch it, funny? it so bad. It's a movie? I, I hear it's hilarious. So it's basically like, uh, it, it's suppo- the, the front is it's a docuseries about Jury Duty. Uh-huh. There's literally one guy. He's the only only guy who isn't a, a paid actor everyone else are paid actors and he has no idea what the fuck's going on that's hilarious and he's a what is of, it on he's a part of the entire docuseries what is it on uh i think it's on amazon prime okay i'm gonna we but can I watch hear, it and then we could like please we could talk about please it. i hear well it's if you if you have some time this week since i'm on spring break i do we I could literally plenty. we could sit down and we could watch it together nothing but actually Yes, I have nothing, nothing but, but time. time. <laughs> Look, nothing but time. You could come over. I could come over and we could just sit down and we could watch it together. I'm here for that it. That would be fun. I'm here for it. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. But I did watch Power. I got caught up because I do like Power. So I got caught up on Power. And it's pretty good this season too. Okay. Look, so, I'll take your word for I it. I only watch... Bless, Bless you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only watch uh, the ghost book. I don't watch. Oh, you like, don't watch the other ones. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. I don't like the other ones. I've tried them out, and they're not for me. So I just need Tariq St. Patrick and his clan. That's all I need to see. Okay. But yes, it's been good. So if you are a power fan, if you are part of the power universe, we can I have tried, some discussions. But I get tired of watching the same stuff. You do about what? drugs and and yeah. and pew pews. Yeah, it's like it's like four episodes out. Pew pews. That's the what pew I get pews. tired of. You know, the pew pews and the drugs. Yeah. 
I get tired um, of it. It is a lot. I don't like a lot of shows like that, but Power is my only one. Oh, okay. I can't do like Marcus. He watches BMF without me. Oh, he I watches will. Snowfall I, without me because I, I just can't BMF. do it. I got into BMF. It's too much. It's yeah. too much. I couldn't get into Snowfall ever. I haven't even tried out BMF. I hear it's great. I like BMF. I, I like the fact that there's a. Uh, it's based off of something factual. Yeah. That makes it more digestible more interesting. for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm just too connected to power at this point because I've been watching it for the beginning. It's kind of like a soap opera. It is. Because like a it soap just opera. keeps going. It it's keeps like going. A, like a Telemundo. Uh, tell a Telemundo. A, tel- a Telemundo. A Telemundo. A Telemundo. A Telemundo. A Telemundo. <laughs> that's so funny i'm dead okay guys well i think that that wraps it up for us and us going through our identity crisis i can't wait to go to sleep yeah you know how you just be emotionally drained i can't wait it's bedtime night night (laughs) Night, all right (laughs) yeah we be filming at night y'all so we's tired um but thank you all for tuning in again and please like share your thoughts about what the hell? We don't know what's Please going on. Please don't be mean to me. Yeah, don't be mean to Ayana because the, the promise still stands. You I'll buck. You in your sh- <laughs> she does that every time. <laughs> every time. You buck, I'm a buck bag. Oh, and if I buck, Ariel buck. Bro, it. watch watch somebody take some watch somebody take that <laughs> small little clip and this is start circulating on shade room. Like, Ariel like, why I gotta be the one? <laughs> <laughs> because I know that if I buck. You bucking too. We all bucking. We all bucking. Uh oh, Asia ready to buck. Asia. So I mean, you got to deal with all of us. Period. Poo. Squad. Squad. Okay. Um, you can follow Squad on TikTok at <laughs> Fill in the Blank Pod. You can find us on YouTube to watch these lovely visuals of us making crazy faces and crying, and all the time. crying and putting up middle fingers and oh, yeah. our rage sign. Um, fill in the blank podcast on YouTube. Yeah, check it out. And then on Instagram, we are fill in the blank underscore. I am at as told by dot Kayla and Ayana at Ayana dot Amore. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.